Hello everyone and welcome to the Collector's Table. My name is Adam and today we're going to unbox and review one of my most anticipated statues. The one-third scale Prime One Studios Jungle Hunter Predator. So this piece came in three massive boxes. So I'm going to need a little bit of help today. The good news is I'll have my daughter uh, help me with the unboxing. So with that out of the way, let's jump straight into it. So, you can see how massive this shipper box is. Uh, according to the box, it's 31 kilograms, so about 68 pounds. Um, so, it's got a little bit of weight to it for the first box. I'm hoping that the base is actually in this one. So, let's go ahead and continue unboxing it. We got the art box out of the first shipper, and you could see the art on the front of the box here. You got the Predator unmasked, and then on the other side, you have the other portrait. So it looks like there's two layers to the first box. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the first layer. So here's the first layer of the first box, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tissue paper. Here it is without the tissue paper removed. And here is the second layer of the first box. All right, so moving on to the second box, um, another massive box. It says 29.5 kilograms, which is about 65 pounds. This art box looks identical, almost identical to the other one. And the only difference is the other side has, looks like it has the bio mask portrait on it. So not a big difference. Wow, this is massive. So the second box is gonna have the body, or excuse me, the torso and the legs and the three headstands. And that's how everything looks without the paper again. And let's move on to the next box. So here's the third and final box. Um, this one weighs 51 pounds, a uh, little bit taller and slimmer than the other ones, but definitely a little bit lighter. So here's the third and final box. And this one is the only one that looks a lot different than the other ones. You got a portrait on this side, his alternate portrait on the other side, but these are just portraits itself. It's not like the whole body. You got a, a cool calendar that they gave you with a whole bunch of different statues for different months. So I, I really like that. And instructions are always good. And now you can see all, uh, all the portraits are gonna be under all that tissue paper. So this, this layer basically has all the portraits, the tree stump, with a little leather satchel that uh, is part of that. So yeah, let's go ahead and put this thing together.
Let's start down here with the base, and I can tell you right off the rip, guys, this thing looks amazing. Um, they really, really did a good job with this base. I can tell you right off the right off the bat. But let's take a closer look. Uh, this his left foot as he's stepping through this swampy area. You can see how the mud is kind of getting pushed away from his foot there. So they really did a good job showing that it's kind of like a muddier, softer area that he's stepping through. The resin, uh, this clear resin that they use for the water looks fantastic. Now, it probably should have been like a murkier water or kind of like a, a brownish, you know, hard to see through kind of water. Uh, but they use this clear resin. I still think it looks fantastic. Uh, even though it might not be 100% movie accurate, I still think it looks great. Um, they got these four little fish down here that they added. Uh, I, I really love that. You can see how they're kind of swimming through the water there. And then you have this uh, rock or boulder that's kind of off to the side. And it's got this little critter on there, the, the little scorpion that's kind of crawling up the top. And then you have the tree stump in the back. And I really like the sculpt and the paint on the tree stump and how it's kind of just flowing through the water. And, the, and it looks like the roots are kind of growing through the water there so really like how they did that I like how they did like this little moss they put this moss through the tree stump kind of like how it's growing on the tree stump I think that looks great and uh, so the the greenery on the on the base it doesn't look the best in person I mean it doesn't look bad on camera but it looks a little plasticky um, even more plasticky when you see it in person but it really doesn't, it really doesn't take away from this statue. I mean, I, I don't think you're going to be focused more on looking at the greenery that, that much. Um, it does break it up to so make it look a little bit better too, instead of it just be all, all monotone and gray and brown. And um, so having some greenery in there is nice, but it does look a little plasticky um, when you actually see it. Uh, but let's move around to the back. You got this really cool snake that's going up the up the tree stump on the back there. It's a nice little Easter egg, and you can see like this moss, this moss that they put again growing up the tree stump. You got the snake going around the back there. So love that. Good attention to detail, even though it's on the back, and you probably will never see it unless it's a centerpiece, which. This can definitely be a centerpiece. Um, but going around, there's his other foot there, stepping into the base. Again, that looks good. You got another little branch going across the rock. So yeah, overall the base looks very well done. The only, the only gripe I would say is probably the greenery a little bit looking fake, but it does not look terrible. Um, it looks, it still looks great because it's going to be pushed in the back there. So I think Prime One still did a good job with the base. Moving on to his legs, you got the plated armor that's going around his shins and knees. And you got a little bit of that body damage or the, uh, the battle damage going across his knee. Really like how they did the paint applications, making it look like real metal. His skin looks great. Uh, I think that's as good as it's gonna get for a Predator statue, especially one of this scale. I mean, this is a massive statue. So I th think they really did uh, a really good job with the paint applications. And you can see more of the plated armor on his shins. This is mixed media here. Um, you got a little bit of mixed media here, like it's tied around his, the back of his legs. The mixed media gets carried on around his waist. This is like a, almost like a real leather. And this is like, feels like suede up here. And he's got a little pouch 
right there that gets magnetized to his belt. More plated armor going across his thighs. It looks just like the movie. I mean, they, they did a really, really fantastic job making this look like the actual Jungle Hunter Predator from the movie. Uh, more netting going across right here. Again, real netting going throughout his whole body. And like I said, this is more of like a suede kind of feel. I don't really remember this from the movie, but it's there. It's, it's part of the statue. So I guess if you didn't want to sport it with that, you could take it off. But, yeah, the legs and the paint applications on the legs and skin, again, look great. And so does the paint applications to the body armor. Now let's take a closer look at his upper body. Really love how they did this, this body armor. Looks just like the movie. I love the battle damage that they did throughout the body armor. Love the, uh, the cabling that goes across the body armor to his breastplate there. Uh, you got these skeleton, like the skeleton necklace going around his neck with this strap with uh, some more skulls that are attached with this like suede um, strap going across there. Uh, you also have uh, his, his skin tone and textures and sculpt was done really well. And you got more of these quills that are going through his whole body and chest. Moving on to the back area, again you have his shoulder cannon with uh, cables that are going back. They just uh, kind of hide into his dreads, but I really like this section right here. I, I think this is called the Medipack. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but this is his Medipack with his more wiring going throughout it. Another cable here connected to his wrist gauntlet. Uh, you have like this spinal cord that's held together with this mixed media leather strap. Uh, another strap here that goes across the front that's help holding together more uh, uh, skeletons and skulls. Love this body armor plate back here. I think that looks really good too. Uh, more quills going through his whole body basically. And let's look at some of these switch outs. So this is Billy's uh, spine, spinal cord with the skull attached for the deluxe version. And moving on to the biomass portrait. Really like this portrait. I think it's very intimidating looking. I really like how the sculpt came out. I think the size is perfect. I think the look is perfect. Uh, LED feature right here. Also the plasma cannon has a LED blue light up feature. But again, portrait looks really good. Uh, like the dreads, the dreads have a wet look to it, which is very reminiscent of the movie. Uh, also has very nice coloring, and it has these like gold colors uh, that are going through the dreads as well. So the next portrait we're going to look at is the Gort, I believe it's called the Gort Biomass Portrait. This portrait looks okay, uh, not my favorite. I prefer the regular Biomask over this one but I think it's still a nice swappable uh, portrait to have. It's just nice to kind of switch it up every now and then, but probably won't be using this portrait too much at all. But like I said, just nice to have options. Moving on to the third portrait, you have the open mandible portrait. Really like this one too. Can't have a predator without the open mandibles. Really like these teeth. These teeth in real, real life look excellent. The vein work inside the mouth looks good. I think uh, the quills make it look a lot better than the quills that are going around the eyes and the face right here. The eyes themselves were painted. Uh, let's see if I can get you a closer look and just look at that guys. It looks so good. So yes, like I said, Prime One did a very, very good job with these portraits giving you a wide uh, variety of options. Uh, can't have, like I said before, can't have a predator without the open mandibles. 
Now I wish that the version with the closed mandibles came with this DX version, but kind of is what it is. Still love this one. And here's the final portrait. Now for this portrait, I put the plasma cannon. Uh, there's another option where you can aim it down. Uh, just wanted to show you that other option. Don't really like that option uh, too much, uh, but check out the closed mandible uh, portrait. It looks very sinister. Love the way this looks. Uh, the mandibles are a little bit, they're closed a little bit more, which I like. Uh, his eyebrows, to me, they look like they're pointed, uh, like he's frowning a little bit more. But this thing looks very sinister, very evil. Love this portrait, maybe more than the biomass portrait. But let's go ahead and switch out the, let's take off the, the plasma cannon all together and see how that looks because you can swap that out completely too. All right, so I have the Medipack swapped out. The Medipack connects to the shoulder cannon or the plasma cannon. So this whole space is freed up now. Uh, we'll take a closer look at the, um, the last portrait that we were just looking at. Uh, that way we could see a little bit better without the plasma cannon in the way. But that's how that looks without the shoulder cannon. And check out this portrait again, guys. Killer, killer portrait. Very sinister looking. Very evil looking. Love, love, love it. And this is Predator all day long. I mean, it just looks so good. And here's the longer wrist blades. I just swapped them out for the shorter ones, so that's how that looks. Here's the swap out for his left hand. So it's just the open hand swap out. That's how that looks. And if you want a little bit of a closer look at the wrist control panel, that's how that looks there. Wish I had the batteries for it, just don't have them at this time, so. But this all illuminates. And again, you get this felt pad if you want to close it so it doesn't scratch anything up. And here's a more zoomed out view of the swappable parts with the swappable portrait. Again, open hand on the left side, closed hand on the right side with the extended blades and the mandibles that are a little bit more closed. That portrait looks tough too. so. Just wanted to show you guys a more zoomed out view of how that looked. Also wanted to show you guys this. You have the three display stands that come with the three different portraits. I love the way that you can display these collectively together or kind of individually. However you kind of want to display it in your collection I think is really cool. Uh, you also have the name plates, the one in red and the one in silver. Uh, I'll probably use the red one just because I like the color. It pops a little bit more. But these display stands or portrait stands are very solid, very heavy, um, and so are the portraits itself. So you can tell the quality that really went into this piece. Let's go ahead and get some dimensions. So this is about 35 inches and some change. The depth, it's a pretty deep piece, so about 27 inches and the width gonna be about another 27 inches or so so pretty sizable piece you definitely want to make sure that you have enough space in your collection if you're buying something this massive also uh, my shelves are standard garage shelves so they're 24 inches in depth what i'll probably do is is move my shelving forward a little bit so if it did have to hang off the edge, which it probably will, obviously, because this is 27 inches, I'll have it hang off the back end so it still looks pretty presentable when I'm actually displaying my statues, but I don't think I'll have a problem with it. Let's get some dimensions on these portrait stands or display stands. So the height is about nine and a half inches with the portrait, seven and a half inches in depth and about six inches in width. So these are pretty sizable as well. And I love these options that they let you kind of display these separately, like I said before. So that's probably exactly what I'll do is I'll display these separately and then have my actual predator statue displayed somewhere else. 
So I really like those options. So overall, guys, I'm very, very happy with this statue. I, I love the Predator. Uh, that being said, this is a very expensive statue. I've been saving a little bit of money to actually get this. Uh, it's a $3,000 statue for the deluxe version. I ordered it directly from Sideshow Collectibles. Um, so everything came in one piece as far as no breakages happening. Uh, it did come in three separate boxes like you guys saw already. So shipping was very expensive. After taxes and shipping all together, it came out to about $3,600. So I would say, yes, you, you definitely got it to be a pretty big Predator fan to order something this large and spend that kind of money. But that being said, I'm completely happy. Love this statue. This might be a forever piece for me. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and switch out the different options as time goes on just to make it look different, but couldn't be happier with this, uh, this actual statue. And if you were on the fence, I don't, I don't know if Sideshow still has it on their website. It might already be waitlisted, but if you have the chance or opportunity to buy this anywhere else, I would 100% jump all over it. So yes, I, I think this is definitely worth the money. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you coming to watch my review here at the collector's table for this awesome piece. I'm sorry it took me so long to get this video out. I know a lot of you have been asking me when the video was going to drop. Uh, unfortunately, me and my family have recently caught COVID, uh, so it kind of put a damper and a delay on the review, well, on a lot of things. But the good news is I'm back and I'm gonna go ahead and try to knock these videos out to bring you guys some great content here on a weekly basis. But make sure that you guys uh, watch our lives at 7 p.m. every Sunday, Eastern Standard Time. We might actually change that time in the future, but as of right now, it's gonna be 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Great content there with a great panel of guys that kind of share all their info on what they're collecting and what's coming out as far as statue news. Um, got some other good reviews coming up here pretty soon. Don't forget that we have our giveaway prize, which is the 1-6 scale tweeter head Joker on Throne statue once we hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you guys liked what you saw today, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys on the next one. 